So we are two out of three. The last is to create a, our calendar charts so that we'll be able to determine. So from this 4,593, which was spent in July, on which days did we make the highest expenditures? Okay, so we're going back to our calculation sheets. This time we're going to calendar. And over here, we're going to create first a calendar that will determine the month we are in. And then we're going to create a bubble chart that's going to plot out the location of the highest spending days. Okay, so we need a lot of space for this. I'm going to include some rules over here. So Alt H I R to bring this to the bottom. I also bring my timeline over there to help me with the flexibility issues. I'll drop this here, Control V. That's my timeline. Okay. So like we always do, we need to first pull out the date selected. So equal to the dates. So let me type it date selected as usual. This is equal to um date value. And we have cube rank member. Okay, we're using this timeline. Okay, and like I said, we're selecting just the first value taken. Yes, I want this to be edited. Control Shift V, and I have my date selected. Fantastic. Okay, now what we need to first do is to set our calendar. So we need to set actually the we need to set the columns and rules right so our calendar really fits. So control so alt H I C to give me some more space. Okay. So I'm going to first input the headers. So Sunday, Monday, select this to and drag to the right. Gives me the other days. So it ends with Saturday. So we have this alt H B S. Kind of put a border around it. Another border here, Alt HPS, which equates this to the date selected. So let's do text of this. I want to show this date as month and year. So I'm going to show this bracket M M M M, and then the year Y Y Y Y, like this. Close bracket. Hit enter. So I have November 2021. That's a particular month I want to calculate for. So control one, I'm going to set this in the center. So I'll come to alignment and uh, cross center cross selection. This is a better alternative to merging the cells. Okay, so I have this control B to boarding. Okay, now what I'm going to do is to calculate or create a calendar that calculates. Uh, that basically does this. Okay, I want to indicate the days of the, the calendar in this calendar layout. Okay, so I'm just going to do Alt HBA like this. Okay, but frankly, what I need is just I have my seven columns and I need just six rules one, two, three, four, five, six. Everything else I don't need. I can take these ones out. So, Alt H E A, and I have this. Okay. So, this is what I'm going to lay out my calendar. So, the function I'm going to use for this is um, sequence. So, sequence is a very fantastic formula that gives you a sequence of numbers starting from one point across a number of steps. So, you indicate the number of rules you need and the columns you need, and those numbers to fill in the start point and the number the other step. So in this case, I need six rules and then I have seven columns, which are the seven days of the week. I close and I have this. Okay, I convert this to control shift general and I have something like this. Okay, 
So now what I'm going to do is to now ensure that one starts from the beginning or the first date on the first day of November. So let me just calculate the first day of November. So equal to weekday. I select um, this weekday. So it shows you that November starts on the second day, which is Monday. Okay, so on the second day, Monday. So first November was on the Monday. So I need to write a formula that will ensure that Monday will be the first day of the calendar, and then any day preceding that will be uh, empty. Okay, so to do this, I need to So the formula is just here. So what I'm going to do is going to be sequence minus weekday of this. You realize because this is going to be the uh, first day of every month. So weekday of this, I hit enter. And I have this. So I have the zero. Because I'm subtracting it by the day the month is like this. So we have zero starting on Monday, Tuesday, and so on and so forth. But I want the one to start on Monday and not Tuesday or plus one. Rather. Okay. And I have this. Okay. So I'm going to now write a formula that says equal to if this is less than or equal to zero. I want you to show me a blank. Otherwise, I want you to give me this. Capture V, close bracket, enter. Again, I missed the one, so last one. Good. So now we have one starts in, uh, on Monday. So let's just test this and ensure that it's working right. So I'm going to select, uh, let's say September. Four. Okay, it starts on the fourth day, one, two, three, four. We have one starting on Wednesday as expected. July, good. So this is working. So now we need to calculate the number of days in a month and ensure that our series doesn't go beyond that. So we have this in place. So this is the first if statement. I'm going to use a, a number of if statements. So I'll use the ifs function, okay, which works like the nested if. So we have this. So if this minus this plus one is less than zero, I want this. Now, if the same thing, so I already have the if over there. So that's even the point. So if this happens to be greater than EO month, EO month of this. And I'm taking the last day of the month. So my number of months is zero. So if this happens to be greater than the day of this, okay, I also want nothing. Otherwise, so everything else is true, then give me my actual calculation, which happens to be this. Close brackets, bring my sequence S. Okay, so we have this, enter, and voila. So this is our start date, and then there are 31 days in July. So let's just, the ultimate date is test is using February. So when I select February, yes, I have 28 days, and it starts on Tuesday. So I think we can say our calendar is working. I'll take this off. Okay, so once you have your calendar in place, uh, you, are, you are doing very well then. What we need to do now is to kind of put it in shape. So we need to create the larger columns and rows so that it kind of fits in. So the column size you're going to use is 8.45 and the row height you're going to use is 35. So all HOW, 
Okay, so 8.43, 8.45, it's pretty much close. So I can just do this. Okay, now alt H O H is called the rule. And this is supposed to be 35. So that it gives it that view. Is that okay? Now, because I want it to be um, uniform, that's why I didn't do it. I just didn't come here and track this. I need to set it to be uniform. Okay, so once I have this, I'm now going to set the numbers center and then um, you can have it in the middle. So come here and I set, select center. So control one, so control one. I come to um, the vertical component. So I'm going to send it to center. I hit okay, Place the numbers to the center and then alt H A C put a line center. So then we have the numbers in the center of the calendar. Is that okay? So good. So now we have our calendar view, okay, which is good. Now we need to create an, an image of this calendar view. So what I mean is we're going to select this, Control C to copy, but we're going to paste this as an image. So come to home, okay, and the home, clipboard come to paste and we are selecting linked picture so we have this link picture so what this actually does is kind of creates an image that is linked to the source so when i drag this here i have this image that's linked to this source so when i change this to december this reflects and then because the link image it just reflects over here just like a mirror but it's an image Okay, so this is what we're actually going to be taking to our dashboard. Okay, so once we have this done, which is the first bit, now the next bit we need to do is to create um, our bubble charts, okay, which is going to feed on this to kind of plot out the days with the maximum expenditure. Okay. Okay, so now once we have our once we have our charts in place, we're going to create uh, the bubble charts we need for this calendar view. Okay, so I'm going to scroll up to my data. So this is my data that I'm going to be using to create my bubble charts. And then I'm going to do this um, by first creating um, kind of a mapping of my calendar. So I want to map out my calendar. And then I'm going to use that to create my bubble charts. So I call this mapping. What I essentially want to do is I want to give a name to every particular slot in this, this calendar. So I have six, I have seven columns and six rows. So six by seven gives me 42 slots. So I'm going to create a, a map of this. So equal to, I'm going to just say slots. Okay, let me just put some space over there and ampersand that with sequence. Okay, so like I said, I have um, I have 42 slots, so I hit enter. So in effect, I have given each slot a name. So this is slot one, slot two, slot three, slot four, slot five, slot six, seven. Okay, so now what I need to do is now derive the days in each slot. Is that okay? So I'm going to select these. Okay, so this is where my value actually sits. Okay, now when I transpose this and I hit enter, it's going to give me the blank, 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 and then starting from the very first um, <clears throat> cell that contains the numbers, the numbers appear. So what I'm going to do is, I want to derive the dates and not just the numbers, okay? So in this formula, I'm going to kind of, in this formula, I'm going to adjust it so it gives me the dates and not just the, um, and not just the number of the day. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to equal to transpose plus,
my selected bits. Okay, when I do enter, I should have this value value and then the date control shift V. Okay, so I have value 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 because those ones are empty and then starting from two. So to get the right thing, I'm going to edit this formula again and subtract one. And I have this. So I have one, two, three, four. Good. And then last but not the least, I'll wrap an if error other on this. So if error. Okay. Do not display. Close this. Enter. So now I have this. Transpose. Da 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 da. If error, do not displace. So I'll copy this and I'll So with that in place, I can now select the entire area, Control Shift 3, and I have my calendar. So these are the dates for each slot. So dates and slots. Okay, so I have the dates per slots. So each slot has the dates <coughs> attributable to that. Now what I'm going to do is to calculate the amount that was spent on on each day from this transaction table. Okay, so I'm gonna get an amount. Like that. So equal to, I'm gonna use a sum if. Okay, so my range is the date range. Okay, my criteria is this. So to, this is just going to make a spill. And this is my sum range. Close this, hit enter, and I have this. So these are my, um, these are the days of the month and how much I spent on each. Now, what I'm going to do now is calculate my top five uh, months. Okay, where I spent or the highest spends, the top five highest spends. Into call rackets, top five. Okay, so the function I'm going to be using. So the formula I'm going to use here is large. We're not going to use large on its own. We're going to use large as well as an if statement. So I'm going to say if this figure happens to be amongst the top five figures, meaning if this figure is greater than or equal to the fifth largest amount, I want that figure, otherwise any. So equal to if, I'm going to select this entire array. Okay, is greater than or equal to large. Okay, again, the entire array. Then I, I'm going to specify which position of um, the top ranking, that's five. I want, if this is greater than or equal to the fit of, or fit largest amount in this array, I want you to give me this figure. Otherwise, I want you to give me an array. So because I'm working with arrays, I need to make sure that everything is going to be an array. So this is an array. Otherwise, I want any. Enter. Good. So in this case, I have the top five figures as one, two, three, four, five. These are my top five figures. Okay. So with that in place, now I have my largest, I have my um, date selected, I have my amount, I have my mapping. I can go ahead and create my bubble chart. So I come to insect, I come to bubble. And I have to make sure I'm not standing within the data sets. I'm just going to stand outside. So I'm going to set a blank canvas with nothing in it. And this is going to be my bubble charts. I have this. Okay. Now right click. And I'm going to right click on this. Select data. Okay. Now I'm going to add a series. But for now, all I have is the series name 
I'm going to call this highest expenditure. And then the bubble size is going to be these. Hit OK. OK. So I have set that in place. Now what I need to do is to plot out the position of each slot on my graph. So first, let me take off this header. OK. So I need to plot out this on the graph. So come to Format, Shape, No Fill. That's for the... Uh, what I'm also going to do is set the, the labels or the axis. So I've become easy for me to set. So Control-1, I'm going to set the minimum to 0 and the maximum to... So the rules, I have just 6 rules, so 6. Enter. So that should make it easy. And for the columns, this the minimum is going to be zero and the maximum is going to be seven. So I have seven columns and six rows. Okay, once I do that, I should be able to fit this safely across my charts. Okay, so I have something like this. So now what I need to do is to plot the position of each slot on this asset, this x, y asset. Okay, so I'm going to call this um, x asset. And beside it, I'm going to have my y asset. Okay, so the first slot is um, this slot, which is having a 0.5x. And a six point and a five point five y, so zero point five x, and then five point five y. I realize for all of them they're going to remain at five point five, and then these ones are going to increase by one for the for the x axis. So I can just do equal to this plus one and copy this down. I'll copy this all the way to the seven day. So these are the these are the plots and the, the coordinates for the very first seven boxes. And I'm going to come to the next one. The next one is going to be 4.5 against these same coordinates. So I can just copy this as X as this because I have a very um, regular shaped plotting area. So it makes it very easy for me. And copy this down to 4.5. The same goes for the rest. So I copy. Okay. So these are going to be the coordinates for our, our bubble charts. So we have everything in place. So now we can right click on this again. Select data. I'm going to edit this. This time we have everything in place. So the x axis is this. And this happens to be our y axis. And we have this. Okay. So let's change this and let's see, okay? So everything is working now. All we need to do is set the bubble size to something more appropriate. So select one bubble, control one. Okay, I'm going to change this to 15. 15. So it fits. We take off our axis. So select this, come to labels, select none. I do the same for this one as well. None. Good. Once that is done, the last thing I need to do, one of the last things I need to do is to set my calendar right. So it kind of fits here. You're not going to get it perfect, but then try and set it as much as possible so it fits. 
So I have this in place and I'm going to drag this again using the as is to kind of fit this together. Good. So when I have something that's good enough, I can now take off my ASICs. I ASICs are already off. I, I mean, my grid lines. Yes. Then I have something like this. I will take off my border line. So border line, none. Uh, and I have this. So I can group these two together. Come to shapes, and then here, group. So I have one shape all together. So with that done, I can cut this as one shape. And go to my dashboard, close this, and I'll paste this here. OK, so once I'm done with this, uh, the thing with the picture image is it picks the image using a cell reference and currently it's picking that of this particular page so we need to change the cell reference so you select the image for the calendar and you go back to your calendar view and you select the right image that's this hit enter and you should be fine so with that in place so we realize that now we have our it's plotted out, but the only problem is our calendar is dark, in dark mode. But because it's an image, we can't edit this. We need to edit the actual one. So I'll go to my calendar. I'll select this. Okay. I'll change the font color to white. So Alt HFC for font color. Change this to white. Okay. So now the font color is white. And I need to change the background to also why so control one select the area control one come to border lines change this to all white uh, and i have to apply so outside line inside line okay and i have this when i come here voila so now i have my expenditure gauge i have my loading charts and i have my calendar view now I'm going to bring my timeline and format it appropriately. So come to this calendar, has my timeline, cut this, and I'm going to paste this here, which will be, okay, expand this a little. And this, to format this, I just go to Yeah, I already have the format, so we'll just select that, and that's it. So with that in place now, when I select my figures, they should respond appropriately. Yes, so basically, this are uh, some of the techniques you can adopt to create custom charts that go beyond Excel's default charts to kind of better visualize your KPIs in Excel. I hope you enjoyed the session and feel free to leave any questions or comments in the comment section. Thank you very much.